Hey guys, doing another video again. This time it's another install. Uh, back to installs instead of just reviews. This is my Corbanth uh, OWK. This was on the first one that he did. Uh, the, I guess they started shipping at the very beginning of last year. I think this came in around, uh, it was like late, late January, early February, I think it, it finally arrived. Um, when it first comes in, uh, nothing's really attached, only like the main pieces are really put together. Uh, it's, uh, it was a nice weighted hilt when it came in, uh, even empty. You know, had a nice solid feel to it. Now with this, the O1K, you can either change it to uh, an episode one or make an episode two variant. Uh, I guess that's based really on the, the pommel cubes where the holes are in this one. And he also ships you one without the holes. So you can make whichever one you like more. Uh, the reason why I ended up getting this was because out of all the prequel sabers, this is probably one of my favorites, along with Obi-Wan's from Revenge of the Sith, but I, I've always really liked the style um, of this lightsaber, and uh, it feels great. It's a nice, uh, nice two-handed saber. This comes with an option for either a one-inch emitter uh, or a seven-eighth inch, which again, Corbin supplies. Uh, this has a NEC, the NEC Cree in here, which is red, green, and royal blue. Uh, I ended up putting a Prism 5.1 in here. There's a 20 millimeter base speaker in this, and there's a Goth 3D chassis. Just the Padawan, uh, the second variant, which basically has the, uh, the the speaker coming at the very end in the pommel, rather than I think there was the, he has the other version where the kill key, I'm sorry, where the uh, recharge port is coming first and the, the speaker is behind it, so I just went the other way around. Uh, okay, so I had to make a, a couple of mods to this that I'll go over as, uh, as I'm going through the saber, but I want to let you guys know that that blade plug is from KR Sabers. It's his one inch blade plug for this. I believe it goes with either the Obi-Wan Kenobi and then also when KR Sabers did his, uh, his their Qui-Gon hilt I believe it also goes with that also. Uh, great blade plug, really enjoy it. There's a little bit of shine through, which uh, which I'll, I'll show in a little bit when I light it up, but I, I did enjoy that. Um, on this hilt, there was no retention screw, so you had to make your own. I decided to put mine somewhat high up in there. That works out well. Now, you'll see these little shine through holes. There's three of them. Uh, one, these help to lock the shroud down onto the top of the emitter. Um, these pieces here, if you could see, those were actually LEDs when they arrived. They each had a positive and negative leg. If you wanted to somehow light those up, uh, the only thing is design-wise, it's really not, it really wasn't made for this. The emitter itself here doesn't have channels or anything on the inside to run wires down towards the soundboard. Um, so I just ended up taking them and, and then cutting the legs off and making them flush. So when you pop these guys in, uh, nothing is sticking out on the inside of the emitter because I really don't know how you would have gotten the wires past the LED, which my LED is sitting right in here. I really don't know how you would have gotten past that without doing some type of modification to this. So, uh, you know, I don't know if he, if, if Corbett wanted us to use those or not, or if those were just pretty much for fun, but there definitely could have been a couple of design changes with this to allow for wild wire channels to maybe get to, to go through in order for it to bypass the heat sink or any threads so that you could have done the light up. I mean, I don't think you need it. Trust me, when you light this up, these, the shine through is a great effect. Uh, and again, I think if it would have been, if you would have actually used these as LEDs, the way they come, I believe it's like a, I think, I think it's just a solid blue, like a light blue LED. Um, so you could have had different blade colors, but this would have remained the same. Uh, I kind of actually like that no matter what color I'm shining out the blade, these match up with it. So that's just one little one little piece right there. Um, so in mine, I actually have a I have activation here, and I also have a secondary auxiliary <coughs> switch in here. So what I ended up doing is. Now, I saw this on a video by uh, Jedith Sabers, which I believe it's run by uh, David Maldonado. He gave me the idea for this. So, <clears throat> deep inside here is where I have a small tactile switch. And what I ended up doing was I drilled 
through Pete the pipe there and I use the end of a, a rivet, the stem. So I have the ball going in for increased surface area to hit the switch and then on top I just basically glued the gem, the little plastic purple gem down onto it and it makes a nice little auxiliary switch which I'll show off in a little bit. Uh, this is a 7th 8th inch diameter going all the way inside so it's very tight and uh, that was definitely one of the small little complications with this uh, hilt. There's really not a lot of room on this uh, but you know it's the hilt itself is, is great. I mean I have to say like it, when you hold this it does feel really good in the hands so it does th that narrow that narrow width around the hilt itself actually does feel pretty good. It's just the inside to me is just it's very very tight. Um, okay so then you have another shroud of course that's down here and these are these are three separate pieces so this neck piece here unscrews from the top of the emitter and there's also this shroud here that slides off and then there's this black piece here that screws into the neck piece underneath the shroud. So you could slide off both pieces if you needed to. This cover tack, the screw does not go all the way through. That is one of the issues that I remember people uh, talking about when they first started to get these was how does, you know, why is this not going all the way through the chat, you know, going all the way through the hilt. Um, don't, you know, don't know why, but uh, again, the, when I first started to unscrew this too, the Allen screws started to strip, so I ended up just uh, swapping one out. Um, although it's, it doesn't, again, this is also a short one that doesn't reach all the way through. It holds the cover tech onto the hilt itself, onto the shroud, but I actually want to get one that's long enough that goes all the way through and maybe even acts as a set screw for the Goth 3D chassis that's in here. Uh, again, the chassis is pretty tight. When I got it, I had to sand it down in order for it to really fit nicely. Uh, and slide pretty well, but now it can, you know, when I'm swinging this around, I really don't want it to move that much. So I think I'm going to get just a little bit of a longer set screw to hold that down. Uh, and then we have the pommel down here. Now the pommel comes off in two pieces. There's the piece that's right here uh, that the whole thing comes off. And then there's also underneath the cubes, underneath the cubes here, this part comes off so that you can switch the cubes out if you wanted to between the one with the holes and one without. And then there's the venting for sound. So here's the Goth chassis here. Here's the 20 millimeter bass speaker. Uh, I also have... There's the recharge port. Uh, now you notice there's no kill key in this because it is a, again, like I said, there is not a lot of space, okay? So when you're sliding this in, it has to almost be perfectly flush and most of these kill keys have some type of lip on it that's going to interfere. Uh, I think Stoke uh, on, uh, I think Dimitri Stoke has uh, on his Shapeway page an ultra low profiled kill key. I was actually going to try one of those out and might end up buying one to see if that sits in low enough that I can shove this thing all the way through. Um, there's also a spot right here which I did not use but there was an on off slide kill switch. Uh, I did not put that one in, uh, only because I didn't really know how to install that. And there were a couple, I ended up buying it, but I couldn't really find a good diagram to, uh, to install. So I'm holding off on that, and it doesn't really need one anyway, because the 5.1 has this deep sleep mode. And so far, that's worked out well for me. I believe, uh, the, you know, the word out there is that the deep sleep mode can last for about a year before it really drains the whole battery. Uh, I, I really don't worry about that. I think that's, that's perfectly fine. So again, I'm going to try and see if uh, the if Stokes ultra low profile kill key works. Uh, and if not, I've got the deep sleep mode, so I'm I'm really okay with that. And what's nice, uh, so there are some wires that are basically like right in here. And what I end up doing is I just slowly just put this on. And because the the pommel's kind of long, that's I got the speaker basically going up right against the pommel. And for a 20 millimeter speaker, uh, it's loud enough. I'm sure if people have found out creative ways to do either a 20, you know, 4, 22, or even a 28 millimeter speaker. Uh, I'm sure that would be a lot louder, but I think some modifications have to get made to the body of the hilt itself on the inside. So if you remove this black shrouded piece, there's just a silver 7 8, 7 8 inch diameter, inner diameter uh, 
tubing on the inside. You can do modifications to that on this back end that do not get exposed. So you could chop it up if you needed to to make more room. And I've seen some people do that in order to get a little crystal focus in here and even a larger, uh, larger bass speaker. Uh, not too many complaints about this Sabre overall. Uh, I mean, now that it has electronics in it, I actually, I love the weight of it. It feels perfect. The one thing that I was not a huge fan of was the situation for the switches up in here. The, there's no channels or anything for these switches to kind of get through, so you kind of, you're left up to doing your own modifications if possible. Um, so again, my LED is housed right in here. Where this activation switch is, there is a shelf that's just underneath that the switch sits in. And then there's kind of like a runoff where the wires can go, can run over and then drop down. However, it's still very, very tight and close to the threading where this piece threads into the emitter. And what was happening was, as I was closing this up, when I had this thing, when I thought I was finished installing it, when I put this up and started screwing this on, it was it kept pinching the wires. And so I said, that's, it's just not a good idea. It just wasn't working out really well. So what I ended up doing was I drilled the hole through the ledge that this is sitting that this is sitting on, and then I drilled a small pilot hole through the bottom of the LED holder, uh, the heat sink itself, just below where the copper base is that actually holds the the LED the, the tricre itself. And I was able to pull the wires through there, and I snuck it through, and that made it a heck of a lot easier. So that the I knew the heat sink wasn't going to get hit by the threads. Uh, when I was screwing this thing on. So that made it uh, a lot safer to me that if I do have to take this thing on and off, it's not gonna keep hitting this. So I don't really plan on taking this out too much because every time I do, I'm, I'm very, very careful. Uh, basically what I end up doing, and again, because the chassis is tight in this 7 8 inch diameter here, and I know Corbin does all his, they're pretty much all 7 8 inch diameter except for the Graflex. Um, had more had a little bit more spacing so uh, just I just know where everything I have lined up so I have my recharge port lined up with the crystal this weapon is your life oh there's the activation so what I do is I'll end up holding this and I'll just make and I'll start turning this as I hold this down and then eventually this piece comes off uh, and I can get to it to make any adjustments that I need but uh, that's the one little thing that I would, I'd be very careful with. Uh, and again, there's other, I'm sure the professionals out there can do this in a snap and it's, it's pretty simple, but I just wanted to make sure that I'm not gonna continue to damage any wires going back and forth. So now that this thing's sealed up, uh, I got the fonts on here that I want. I don't really plan on doing a lot of, uh, a lot of big changes with it. Uh, okay, so with that, I'll turn her on, show, uh, show off some of the colors blade and with the blade and all that stuff and uh, we'll have a little bit of fun so again here's the activation this is uh, Lord Blaco's uh, OWK Phantom Menace Rage as you can see you got a nice little shine through with the blade itself as well as these little side LEDs here and then here is the secondary auxiliary switch. I have a bad feeling about this. This is Mad Cow's Fates. May the force be with you. This is Shamim's The Master 3. This is Juan Sith's uh, A New Hope Obi-Wan Kenobi. I believe it's called the Master Obi-Wan. Uh, this one's Grey Meat. And the final one. 
ideals and absolutes. I will do what I must. And Grey Meat is by Sekrog 1985. Uh, and this one is The Last Encounter by Rig BB8. This is, more, this is a, actually a Luke style font from Return of the Jedi. Okay, all right, now let me uh, let me get a blade in here. The uh, the one inch blade is a little snug, but it does uh, you can get it all the way in there. Maybe uh, a little bit of sanding on the inside might help. So again, here's the blade plug from KR. I had to trim it a little bit on the bottom uh, because it wasn't it was actually sticking out a little bit. I guess that all depends on where you house the LED. Uh, there's the LED right in there. This is a Vader's Vault, one inch, it's their standard blade. I'm just gonna hit the lights for a sec before I turn this on. Okay. Uh, this is again, this is uh, the Rig BB-8 last encounter, so this is green. Flash on class. Let me get back to the first one. This weapon is your life. All right. All right. Here's our nice blue. Again, you can see the light up. The light up shine through. Going through there. action. Okay. So, I mean, overall, I think it's it's a pretty good hilt. It's very sturdy. You could definitely duel with this if you wanted to. Uh, just, I know a lot of people are doing, I've seen a lot of nanos done with this, and it just makes it really easy, because all you have to worry about really is just the one activation switch. Uh, so if you wanted to do a second Secondary or a secondary activation switch, or I'm sorry, secondary auxiliary switch. Got to get a little creative with that. Uh, I thought this really was the perfect solution, and I definitely recommend doing it if you're going to be uh, putting a board in here that can support multiple multiple switches. Uh, I haven't really seen anyone do the any of the crystal reveal or crystal chambers yet. I think on Goth's chassis they were towards the bottom. Uh, which kind of makes sense, so this way you can kind of pull off the pommel and then maybe you pull out the, the crystal chamber a little bit, or even the crystal chamber might even hang out a little bit based on uh, based on where he placed that. So that that, that is possible. Uh, but overall, I really enjoy this. Uh, I was happy that I got this hilt. Uh, like I said, this is definitely one of my favorite hilts from the prequel trilogy. And, uh, you know, I would think about maybe getting a Revenge of the Sith style hilt. Uh, I do love my thin necks, as you know from my other videos, but I uh, haven't decided on that yet. But as of right now, I'm definitely happy with this. This is something that I, I would have a little more contact with uh, and have a little bit more fun. Uh, I'll, I'll keep this one inch. I'm not going to put the seventh, eighth inch emitter on. Uh, I like this. I like the one inch much better for here. Um, but overall, this was uh, this was a lengthy install because of some of the issues, I, again, that I ran up against with the, the wiring up in here. Uh, but other than that, I, I thought it was, you know, other than that, it's it's really not that bad. Goth's chassis are great. I highly recommend going with that um, when it comes to when it comes to doing this install. Um, and that's really about it, guys. You know, nothing else new with this. Uh, I got, again, some other installs are hopefully coming up. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review soon of a uh, vintage Graflex install with uh, Martin Byers' chassis. And... I am also I'm just waiting for my Graflex from the Graflex shop to come in, that replica. That chassis is already done. That's a that's a master chassis by Goth as well. That's all finished. I just need the hill to get here to finish the installation. And so I'll be doing a, a video comparing the uh, the Graflex shop's replica 
a vintage and then also Corbanth's 2.1 that I did uh, last year. I'm going to bring that back out just to do a comparison between the three. Uh, so that's probably next up on my list. And yeah, just waiting for uh, Goth to develop a few more chassis uh, to come out. And this way I can get a couple more installs done. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day.